I recently got some monitors at Salvation Army, both of which were LCD monitors. And one worked perfectly fine. This one obviously is having some issues. The screen isn't lighting up as well as it could. This is what the laptop screen looks like. And then this is how the LCD appears. So clearly there's something wrong with the lighting mechanism. My guess is the inverter board is having some problems, but we'll need to open the monitor to find out what the problem is. All right, so I finally got this thing open. ViewSonics are apparently pretty difficult to get open, but it is possible. Anyway, this capacitor has failed. The surface at the top is convex. This one has failed, it's convex, and I can see some dried up electrolyte on the surface here. And this one also has failed. So perhaps you can see that darkness there, so that one's clearly failed. This one is failed, and as is this one here. These other ones look okay. I should test them, but I don't really have a great way of testing electrolytics at this point. So I'm going to assume they're okay, replace these ones, and see how it functions after that. So I managed to find some capacitors that were suitable. Now the voltages were different, so their heights are a bit different. but. I checked the clearance and they're okay with the other components and with the case, so we'll be all right. The most important thing to do is match the capacitance. So both of these were 470 microfarad and this one was 470 mic or uh, 1000 microfarad. So the voltages are a bit different as I stated, but that's fine. All you really need to worry about is whether they'll fit and if the capacitance is right. And in case you're wondering, the tools I used to remove the capacitors were this soldering iron and this solder sucker. So you just heat up the joint and suck up the solder. You should only have to do that a few times in order to wiggle the capacitor out and then find a suitable replacement. All right, time to reconstruct this. All right, the backlight is working again at 100%. And all I had to do was replace three electrolytic capacitors. Two of them, it looks like, were powering the inverter circuit, so the inverter circuit wasn't seeing the entire 12 volt level. It was just seeing a small voltage there. I'm not exactly sure what it was. I don't like to do measurements with those high voltage uh, transformers in there, so I always do this kind of monitor without power applied. And when it comes to opening monitors in general, first thing you want to do is check the back for screws. And if you don't see any screws, then what you're going to need to do is find the seams. Typically the seam will be right here on the front. So you'll need a flat headed screwdriver and then you'll need to insert into the seam, give it a twist and it'll start separating. You may hear some clicks and cracks. You may break a few tabs while you do this but it's not the end of the world if you break a few. You don't need too many to keep the case together. So once you get the front cover off there will probably be some screws that you'll need to remove and once you get those screws out you should be able to remove the back panel. With this one it was a little tricky because there's this cable here which got in the way a bit and once you get the back off there'll be some more screws probably on the side and on the back and on the stand that you'll need to remove and then you can finally access the circuit boards. So. Yeah, that's how you get monitors open in general. The best ones have screws on the back. And then you just take those screws out and you can lift it straight out. It's great. But that's few and far between, honestly. All right. Now I'm going to show you some close-ups of the capacitors I removed just so you can identify a bad capacitor visually. Okay, so the capacitor on the right is a capacitor that has failed. The two best indicators are the fact that it's convex. It bulges out at the top. And if it's really bad, you'll see some dried up electrolyte on the top here. It tends to be brown or dark, dark brown. Now this is a healthy capacitor. The surface is flat. Now something else that you may notice with a bad capacitor is how the bottom appears. So this is a healthy capacitor and this is a bad capacitor. So it has ruptured on the bottom as well. This is a little more difficult to see 
because this is typically right up against the printed circuit board, so it's very difficult to see the bottom. But the top should also have some bulging uh, when the capacitor has failed. So those would be the two things to look for visually when it comes to failed capacitors. Now when it comes to replacing them, a capacitor will have two values on them. The capacitance, so right here, the 1000 mu f, so that's 1000 microfarads. And then there's the voltage. So what you need to do is you need to find a capacitor with the same capacitance. The voltage isn't as important. All you need to do is make sure that the voltage is the same or higher in order to get the proper solution for a replacement. Lead spacing and height is also a factor, but it's not nearly as important as the capacitance. Capacitance is really the only thing that matters. So thanks for watching and have a good day.